Playing slowly is your friend. Hey fiddlers, welcome to today's fiddle video. I spent some time in the classical universe and in that time I played a lot of scales and arpeggios, did some etudes, all of that can be really helpful but sometimes you just want to play a tune. So today I'm going to talk you through a few different ways that you can use a tune as a warm-up. That way you get to play the tune and enjoy that and at the same time kind of improve your technique. If you'd like a tutorial on the tune that I'm going to be using to demonstrate these ideas, it's called Hardyman the Fiddler. You'll find a link for it in the description. So first of all, let's think about some of the general categories of things you could work on in the context of a tune. There are some fundamentals that are always good to work on and those include things like tone, intonation, and keeping a steady beat. And then certain tunes will present you with certain challenges. For example, reels might give you an opportunity to practice certain bowing patterns, like maybe the Georgia Shuffle, or a pattern that uses three separate, three slurred, and two separate, something like that. And a slow tune might give you an opportunity to practice something like vibrato, or giving a tune a little bit more maybe phrasing and dynamic variation. First, let's go back to fundamentals and think about how could you practice your tone in a tune that you're playing for fun. So with our tune, Hardyman the Fiddler, which sounds like this. A great way to practice your tone would just be to slow the tune down. I know you might hear that a lot. Slowing the tune down will allow you to really focus on just getting the best, most resonant sound you possibly can. So for example, you might play the A part, just making sure you keep your bow between the bridge and the fingerboard in a place where you might get a sound that you really wanna get. Or you might take one time through the tune where all you're focusing on is relaxing your right arm. Or you might take one time through the tune where you're focusing on just getting the right amount of weight on the bow. So not too much and not too little. All right, so that's tone. How about intonation? There are two particular things you might try to practice your intonation by playing a tune. The first would be to turn on a recording of a drone note, and you can find these on the interwebs. Basically, you'll just choose the root note of the key that you're playing in. So for Hardyman the Fiddler, we're in D Mixolydian, we would find a D drone note online. Then as you play along, you can see how those notes sound with the drone note. Some notes will be more dissonant with that drone note, but again, it just gives you a reference point so that you can start to maybe hear where you might be going astray with your finger placements. <laughs> play double stops with an open string. This may sound better and work better with some tunes than with others, but for example, if you're in the key of D mixolydian, a D note or an A note will be good notes to drone on, and you can hear whether the notes that you're playing with your fingers mesh with those open strings or how they sound in relation to those open strings. Again, playing slowly is your friend. All right, so now we get to keeping a steady beat. A very helpful tool for this is your trusty metronome. Again, I think it's great to start really slow and then just focus on settling into that beat. the sort of specific challenges that a tune might present to you. Let's say, for example, you want to practice jig bowings. This is a jig. So you can try just playing, for example, one bow per beat through the tune and just stick with that bowing pattern. <laughs> Let's say you want to 
practice cross the beat slurs. You can find every opportunity within that tune where you could do a cross the beat slur and do it. It's not like you would actually keep that same bowing pattern through the tune if you were just playing the tune, but it gives you an opportunity to just practice that technique and see where in the tune that technique would work. Maybe you've been working on your string crossings and there's a particular part of this tune that has a lot of string crossings. You could take it real slow and just loop it, gradually increasing the speed. ornamentation. You might want to try just choosing one ornament and seeing how many places in this tune could I put that ornament. For example, if you want to try adding rolls to this tune, look for opportunities to throw rolls in there. Or maybe mordants. sound good, but it's good practice. Maybe you'd like to get your fourth finger in gear so it's ready for those moments when you need it. You could try using your fourth finger instead of the open strings throughout the tune. Maybe you want to work on your dynamics so you could play through the tune, trying to play it as loudly as you can while still getting a good tone and as softly as you can to explore the range of possibilities. I think scales, arpeggios, and etudes are great warm-ups is that they either simplify things so that you can really focus on the technique or maybe they throw a whole bunch of that one technique your way and give you a really good opportunity to practice it. But using a tune as a warm-up gives you a chance to practice these techniques in something that's a little closer to a real-world fiddling situation. But I would say that slowing the tune down or taking a small chunk of the tune and repeating it a whole bunch might make it a more effective warm-up rather than if you just play the tune through the normal way that you would play it. Okay, fiddlers, that does it for today's video. And if you would like a video tutorial on the tune that I use to demonstrate this idea today, you can find a link in the description for that. Have a wonderful day, happy fiddling, and I will see you soon.